Hello and welcome to the Conquering History channel. Today I'll be reviewing and analyzing Legend of the Galactic Heroes Episode 5. We start on the planet Labart where Maximilian von Kastrop, the son of the former treasure secretary, is enjoying the riches that he has gotten from his father's former position. He will not give up the money that his father stole to the Empire. Count Franz von Meringdorf advises against this, saying that it is foolish to think that a single territory can stand against the Empire. As they speak, the Empire's fleet arrives. They try to attack, but are stopped by the Artemis Necklace, a defense identical to the one that protects Hyzenopolis, the capital of the Free Planets Alliance. This was financed by money from Faison, who were doing this to inconvenience the Empire after their victory at Estate. Back on Odin, we see Reinhardt and his new admirals comprised of lower cap class nobles and even commoners, including Admirals Wallen, Lutz, Kempf, Bigenfield, Mecklinger, Mittermeier, and Ruenthal. We are introduced to them all, and like Reinhardt, they are all rather young, with not a gray hair among them. Reinhardt assigns Kerchis, who was just promoted to rear admiral, the task of suppressing the Kastrop Rebellion. He is given only 2,000 ships, even less than the amount used by the original fleet, which was destroyed. Later, Ruenthal and Mittermeier note that Reinhardt has given such a difficult task to Kirchis so that he will be promoted after such an enormous success. Siegfried departs Odin with his new fleet. Once in space, we run into the vet and the kid again, although now they are given the names Kurt and Tinio, respectively. Pardon me, Tonio. Tonio is nervous about being under the command of a new admiral. He is not alone in this. Captains Hans Bergegren is also worried about being under the command of a former aide. Drunk, the captain says that Kirchis doesn't understand what he's getting into. However, Kirchis is confident and unfazed by doubt. Later, Kirchis flashes back to a dinner with Anna Rose and Reinhardt. When Reinhardt leaves the table for a moment, Anna Rose pleads with Kirchis to take care of her brother, as he relies on Kirchis so much. Reinhardt, for all his genius, often is not aware of the things right in front of him, which is why he needs Kirchis. Kirchis is the only one who could truly talk to Reinhardt. Kirchis agrees to this. The fleet reaches planet Labart, and Kirchis deploys his engineering ships. These ships start to drop Zephyr particles into the planet's orbit around the Artemis necklace. When the necklace fires at his fleet, the particles, which are effectively an explosive gas, cause a chain reaction which destroys the necklace in an instant. After this, Kirchis asks for the peaceful surrender of the planet, an offer refused because it is seen as a trap. Maximilian Kastrop goes a little crazy due to the position that he has now been put in, even going so far as to tell one of his advisors to burn his own face in an attempt to impersonate Kastrop while the real one flees to Faison. Said advisor kills Kastrop, hoping that by killing him, they will be pardoned by the Empire, and Kastrop gets the Julius Caesar treatment. The rebellion ends and Kastrop picks up Count Merendorf and returns him to his daughter Hilda. Kerchus is now a hero, but in a conversation with Reinhardt, he expresses guilt at the death of Kastrop. Reinhardt relieves him of this guilt, blaming the Empire for it, and reminding him that is not their way of doing things. The episode ends with Kerchus becoming Vice Admiral, firmly established as Reinhardt's second in command. Alright, well like most shows, not all episodes are created equal. This one is another character building one for Kerchus and Reinhardt. We see that not only are they planning to seize power one day, they are planning on changing how the Empire is run. One thing of interest, though, is we see Faison continue to meddle and attempt to influence events in the galaxy. Next time, it will be a return to the Alliance side, where Yang starts working on trying to take Iserlan Fortress, and it's going to be a big one. There's a lot of stuff that happens in that episode. So I will see you there. Uh, and also, one last thing, I'm having trouble... Uh, accessing Legend of the Galactic Heroes files that already have the subtitles embedded in them. I was using Kiss Anime, but I've been having issue downloading from them, so if anybody wants to point me in the direction or give me some files that already have the subtitles embedded in them, I really think that they improve the quality of the episodes, and today's episode obviously didn't have any, so you can tell me if you felt that it uh, the episode wasn't as good because of it. But I would really appreciate hearing back about that. And so have a great day and I'll see you all in episode 6.